Hey everybody, welcome to the Motor Mount Part 2. It's a build of motor mounts for the E34 dyno car, which is going to receive an OM617. Now I got to tell you that uh, this approach is going to be much different when I do the mounts for the 606 and any future builds after that. But the 617 really won't have enough power to stress these uh, to the limit, I don't think. Okay, so it's gonna be hard to make a time-lapse video because um, the placement of the mounts, right? I mean, all you're gonna see is my back most of the time, so I don't wanna do that to you, I wanna spare you. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you my approach. I'll show you the passenger side mount. I've already got it uh, kind of, I got the two bent and notched, and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the obstacles and my approach on the driver's side. Now again, the driver's side mount would not fly with the torque that I'm going to put through the 606. Um, but the OM617, if I get 250 wheel, I'll be happy. The 606, uh, it's going to go way beyond that. And the bins and the mount, not a good thing. So keep in mind, this will change for a higher horsepower rating. It's just to get the car going so that we can get it on the dyno and start testing out some of these configurations. So let's check out what I'm doing with the motor mount. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. We got our mounts that we made in the last episode right there. Now, I don't think people realize uh, why I did things the way I did, and I really didn't take time to explain it. In a nutshell, we've got the force and weight of the engine pushing down on the plate. That's why I put the plate on the bottom and it's also supporting the sidewall of the tube. It's much stronger. Now I didn't get any feedback but I did grind down the welds to try to make it look nice and that's really because I felt I had enough penetration on the weld and again the weight and the force is going down that that bottom plate would support this with no problem. It's going to be a much different story when I do the side of uh, this mount. So let's go ahead and look at the side. So here it is. Okay, so this is the uh, engine mount side. And then this is, of course, where the tube comes in. So if we look at the engine here, I've got multiple angles, right? I've got this angle coming off the engine. And then I've got the angle of the tube in both directions, right? It goes up and down, and then it goes side to side. So this is a, it looks like a simple bend and it started out as a 90, but it is a major compound angle to work on. The best thing you can do if you're building your own mounts is to get it close. Focus on the notch. Get the notch angle correct and then you can start to grind. I don't think you can see it, but I got a flap disc over there on the grinder. I rough cut this motor, motor mount side and then I just slowly ground it down until it fit the way I wanted. Okay, so let's put this in place and look at it. Okay, this is exactly why I'm not going to shoot a video doing this, because this really sucks trying to hold the camera, hold the pipe, and I couldn't imagine welding, and there's no way a tripod is going to fit in here. But you can see that uh, the way the angle is cut, I'm going to be close to the bottom of this mount. It'll make it more rigid and give it a lot more strength than if it was way up high. Right, so because of the studs I can't get super high, but there you go. So if it was higher, then it puts more stress on those welds down below, but if it's down here, it's a much stronger mount. Okay, let's look at the engine side if I can actually get in there. That's probably going to be as good as it gets. And there's some latitude, right? It's sloppy because I'm holding a phone. I'm, I'm trying to angle it, and I'm holding the pipe, and it's, uh, it's just difficult. But it does sit pretty flush up there on the mount, and it is pretty centered on the mount uh, when I'm focused on holding that in place. So this, zooming out a little bit, is what that mount is going to look like. Okay, so let's go now to the driver's side. 
Okay, so I think I hit on this in part one. Honestly, I don't watch my own videos a lot, so I really don't remember. But we've got the mounting plate back in there. All right, you can see it back there. It's got to come across the power steering pump into this mount. Now that might not look bad, but I'm going to grab some pipe here. Okay, this particular pipe has a 38 degree bend. So if I hold it back there now on the mount, which you're not going to be able to see, and of course I can cut the pipe to meet the mount, the distance there to the motor mount, not the engine mount, is pretty far off. And uh, unfortunately that puts a lot of stress on the top of the mount, right? And the forces will be going this way and down, except when I'm accelerating and it goes in the opposite direction. And, and if you know anything about leverage, because we're so far away off the base now, it's magnified and I, I just don't see it as being successful. I think what I have to do, unfortunately, is come off here, go to 90, behind the steering box and up and into the mount. Now that is pretty convoluted and honestly it's pretty stupid. Now when it comes to big power, I am going to have to change my game. I'm probably going to either mount it to the side of the frame rail here under the linkage or I'm going to mount it to the top of the frame rail and come over. But I want to put the, the 606 and the future engine in uh, I'm actually thinking of a 648, by the way. But I want to put the future engine in and see um, how it aligns with the frame rail before I make that decision. I don't want to modify this car heavily for the 617 because I only have three or four dyno passes on it. And then I'm done with the 617. All right, so let's see how it turned out. And there it is. That is our motor mount. It's exactly what I wanted. Honestly, I forgot to trim the top, but I think it's it's just fine. I'll just match the other side to it So it should be extremely strong uh, again. No welds were ground down. Uh, it's over welded. It's extremely strong So the other side as I mentioned will be a bear, but uh, it'll be really the same process Right just spinning the tube. I'll probably have to have a seam in there, which I don't like but for this horsepower I'm okay with it and then uh, I'll weld it up to the perch just like I did there. So one thing to consider when you do your welds or when you build your mounts are the way the studs are coming. If you look on the 617 here, the studs are actually coming out, right? They're pointed this way. Well, the motor mount is up at an angle, right? So I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it's pointed in. So that means you can't just unbolt the mount and take it out. Uh, easy solution, you just undo the four bolts on the 617, you do the bolt from underneath on the E34, and the arm comes right out. But you need to think about those kind of things when you do your own mounts. So take your time, regardless of the material, whether it's round or the 1x3 rectangular like I did on my 123, doesn't really matter. Uh, overbuild them if you can, so they're good and strong, and I'm sure they will turn out just fine. Thanks for watching.